Hello, 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 everyone. I hope you're having a great day. I know I am because there isn't anything I'd rather be doing, and I am so happy to be here with you. Today, we're going to paint this super easy, super pretty floral explosion. Flower power! This tutorial is perfect for beginning dot painters because it's going to give you plenty of practice with basic dotting, walking the dots, creating tails and swooshes, and dot shaping. Here's my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together and let's go make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. I'm painting on a six inch round wood cutout. I'm attaching an old plastic lid with some earthquake putty to the back of the cutout. And this is a great way to handle the disc without holding it where I need to paint. I'm using black patio paint this time. Now I like to dot paint on slick surfaces because the dots turn out so much better. Um, usually I use black matte paint and then I varnish before I begin dotting, but I thought I'd try something different today. And I'm smoothing out the paint strokes with a sponge. This is just my preference and it's completely optional. Now the reason that I prime my wood before I paint is because it fills in the grain and it creates a smooth painting surface. And also it keeps the paint from soaking into the wood and fading. I'm using stencils to trace on random circles for the flowers. And also I'm going to add a few half circles so it'll appear that the flowers continue off the edge of the canvas. The stencils work great for this because it's important to have a center marker for each circle. And also you want to have uniform starting and stopping markers for each of the petals. If you don't have stencils, you can use a compass or just trace anything round and then use a ruler to add the lines and to find your center. Make sure to leave a little bit of space in between the circles and that way we'll have room to add some decorative dots in between our flowers. I'm going to reference my dotting tools by number. The small ball tools are S1 to S5, with one being the smallest. And my big tools are L1 to L8, and again, one is the smallest. I recommend making a dotting tool size guide. It makes it easy to determine the tool size that you're gonna wanna use when you're first starting out and I've included a link in the description area if you're interested in making your own. Let's begin by adding a center dot to our first flower. And I'm using my L4 for this. Now let's add the first petal. Load the same tool and place a dot at the starting point. And then reload that tool and dot right back over to add more paint. Now switch to your finest tipped tool and grab the paint and drag the paint down the straight line towards the center. And I'm using my S1 tool for this. Now let's shape the tail into a long petal by dragging the paint around the sides of the line that you just made. As you drag the paint, lighten up on the pressure as you're bringing it to a point. 
we're basically pushing and pulling the paint into place. Now, let's add the second color to our flower. This time, let's move the starting point in just a little closer to the center. And we want to make sure that the petals end the same distance from the center dot as the first set of petals. Just drag the paint in a straight line centered in between the two existing petals. Using my S1 tool, I'm adding a little fleck of petal um, to the half flowers just to fill in the empty space where the flower disappears off the edge of the canvas. Now let's make our next flower. I want to try to use as much of the paint that I've already poured out, so I'm moving to a flower that I want to use my purple paint on. I'm using my L4 tool for this large flower as well. And my large flowers are two and a half inches wide. Make sure that you take your time. I don't really paint this fast. Now, I made a color plan so I know what colors I'm going to be combining on each flower. And, uh, and again, this will help use up the paint that's already been poured. Make sure you wipe off the tips of your tools often because the paint builds up and it will affect the quality of your dots and your drags.
Moving to one of the smallest flowers now, and my small flowers are one and a quarter inches in diameter. And for these, I moved down two dotting tool sizes to my L1 for the petals. And you guessed it, I'm using the same S1 tool to drag the paint. If you find you don't have enough space to fit your alternate petals uh, in between, then just drop down a tool size and make the petals a little less wide, or you could even overlap them if you'd like. I am loving all of these beautiful colors. Switching back to my L3 tool, and this red is geranium red. Now how fitting is that? Don't forget to keep a rag handy so you can keep cleaning off your tools. Now, I want to use this red up because it's drying so fast in the palette. So I'm gonna switch to a smaller flower um, and then come back to this big one. I've switched to my L1 again for the petals. back to my L3 to finish the petals on this large flower.
If you need to erase paint, just grab a cotton swab, get it wet, and wipe up the paint. And if this should happen, you will be so glad that you varnished or used a glossy paint before you started dotting. All right, using our finest pointed dotting tool, for me that's my S1, let's add some small dots around our flower centers and some tiny swishes in between the base of our petals. I'm using a very small dot of paint in between the petal bases and then just dragging that tiny dot until it runs out of paint. And let's add some top dots to our flower centers. I'm using some metallic copper for this. When you're dotting with metallic, the paint tends to be uh, a little elasticy. It snaps back. Sometimes it leaves a trail of paint um, that can <laughs> land across your painting, which is not a great thing. So I recommend you go slow, like sloth slow <laughs> and make sure there is no tail of paint coming off the tool before you move it over your canvas and dot and then make sure that there's no tail of paint before you remove it and uh, bring it back to your palette. All right, let's add some random dots. And I'm using my S5 tool for this. And I'm just walking the dots in random arcs. I'm not adding too many. I just want enough to add a little bit of a design in between the flowers. 
load your tool and then place your first dot and then without reloading dot three or four more times and try to space it evenly. And let's add a few random large dots. Um, I'm using my L2 and L3 tools and also my S5 super loaded up. Make sure all your dots are dry and all of your chalk lines are erased or painted over. I like to let my dots dry overnight and then it's time to burnish. I'm using DuraClear, a paintbrush, and a foam paint roller. Now, I really like using the roller for varnishing flat surfaces because it doesn't leave streaks or brush marks. But I find that sometimes it doesn't cover with just one coat. So I adjusted my method and now I like to use a brush to apply the varnish first, making sure that the entire surface is covered. And then I roll it out for an even finish. Voila! It's a wrap! Look at our beautiful bouquet! I just love these vibrant colors! Thank you all for joining me today and a warm welcome to all of my new subscribers! I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time to paint with a passion! Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. I wish you peace, love, and happiness now and always. Bye!